Hi, everybody. This is Gina Cavalier, and this is Liberated Healer Podcast. I'm really excited because we're talking about one of my favorite topics of all time, guides. And we have Marilyn Aloria on. Welcome. Hi. Hi. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, I could talk about the subject for days. Um, so you're a gifted psychic medium. Um, you have a background a while ago in entertainment as well as mm -hmm. I did. A lot of people know that, but you're in this space now um, and writing books and really important books. And this book that you have out called Guides, Mystical Connections to Soul Guides and Divine Teachers is wonderful. I have it. I've been looking at it for on and off for a few months. I have it, you know, bookmarked to all craziness. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Gina and I. It took Gina and I a little bit to get it together, and just because things happen in life. But I was, we were just talking about it. and It was so great to. She was just so understanding, so that's always <laughs> wonderful, you know. <laughs> oh gosh, you have to be right now. Um, so give us a little context about yourself and your journey through getting here to this book and working with guides. Definitely. Um, so I was born in Brooklyn. I'm not going to give you the whole story, but a lot of people will relate to the trauma part. You know, you, I grew up in a lot of trauma, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stuff going on and had these gifts since I was little, but didn't recognize that they were gifts. And I think a lot of people have them when they're younger, but they don't recognize it because people tell them it's their imagination. They're making things up or they're being dramatic. And when I got older, uh, I was always kind of knew I was psychic and things were starting to come to a head. And I was living in Manhattan when I started hearing my name called. I felt people talking to me. I started seeing deceased loved ones, uh, not deceased loved ones, actually. I saw the first kids I saw were the kids who did the killing in Columbine. Those were the first spirits I saw. And then 9-11 happened and the pilots were at the end of my bed. So I didn't know what was going on. And I started getting locked in rooms. And there's a whole story about it. And I talk about it on my podcast, Who Can It Be Now?, but I left Manhattan soon after 9-11 because I just could not handle what was going on. Plus, so many other things were happening in my life. And I moved to California and my whole soul cracked open. My whole um, gifts opened up and I started learning how to work with them. And through learning how to work with them, I met my guides and I started communicating with them. And at that time, there wasn't Google. So they really taught me how to see, how to hear, how to know. I did a little bit of studies and there were books, obviously some books around, but it's not like it is today. And what I found through my journeys of doing readings, I was really sought after to do, uh, for readings. I would have like a wait list of people um, sure. was that I didn't want people to come to me and give their power away. I wanted people to learn how to do it for themselves because we're all gifted. So that's where I started teaching more. I was teaching from day one, but my focus was on teaching people how to do what I do. And then Sacred Stories Publishing approached me about doing the book. And I was like, yeah, I'll do this book. I teach about guides. So it's yeah. it's great. And that's where that's why I'm here now. And thank you to Sacred Stories. They're really a great group of people and have sent me some wonderful authors. And, you know, it is a journey to put this book together. Um, and you have several um, authors that come in and tell their stories, which is really, I, I like that idea. Um, I'm using, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that to my book and you have an author on there that I'm, I'm thinking about using, uh, Selena. So, um, but it's really, uh, a, you know, I just, it's, it's huge effort. So just thank you from the universe to you for putting that down because anybody who's interested about guides and like, if you have no zero knowledge, mm -hmm. you can pick up the book, or if you have a lot of knowledge, you can pick up the book and you can just use it as sort of like a workbook or a guidebook. And you touch on so many different subjects. And you're written in, in a way that's, I think, um, easy for the the novice and the expert to kind of navigate, which I think is really hard. So, um, you know, I appreciate that. And you have things in there, a lot of things in there I've never heard. And I read this stuff every day. So I always appreciate like, wow, I didn't know that. So uh, that's why I recommend it so highly. Um, Thank you. So um, where, where, where do you start when people start to ask you about guides like how do you what is your intro into what this all means and how they can help you and what they're here for and what do you, how do you start to talk to people about it yeah so thank you for that Gina and I I just I want to applaud you too for doing what you're doing because I think it's really important to sit in a space and Gina and I were talking about this a tiny bit beforehand a lot of when I was studying and I did I was in some spiritual communities there was a lot of competition in that room 
And I feel like what we're bringing out, especially in this book with other authors being in there and by sharing this space is really teaching people that no one's better than anybody else. We're all gifted and how we use our own instrument is what's important. Mm -hmm. So when people approach me about having to communicate with their guides, I teach in a very uh, creative way that's out of the box thinking, using your imagination quite a bit. And I like to meet the person where they are in their journey so that they're not thinking they're getting it wrong. Instead, they're learning how to use their particular instrument with some of my techniques and tools, accelerating their growth and their communication with their guides. Therefore, they're creating their own intimate relationship with their guide. And that's really important to me because... I think in the past, a lot of people would compare. I see this with my own students and stuff and community. I've been teaching people around the world for years how to do this. And I'm sure you have had this experience. And people are always comparing themselves to, well, jo Josie does it like this. Why aren't I doing it like Josie? I'm not good. And mind chatter is the killer for all communication. So I just love that my guides, they told me right off the bat that they were teaching guides. And they must have known what I, I didn't want to do this. I didn't know I was going to be doing this. And they knew from get-go that they would be teaching through me. So um, they're extremely creative. They pull from all aspects of my life. And I, I feel like that's what they want to teach everyone else is like your life experience is how they communicate with you. And when you start recognizing all the things that have happened to you in your life, there's such a synchronicity and there's such a communication in that it really becomes, the information becomes profound and you can follow the thread to where you want to go. I love that because it's true. You, you know, a lot of people get frustrated and give up and they're like, oh, that person can just see, see them clearly like an apparition and hear every word. And you, you have to find where your gift lies. You know, I, you know, it could be in sound or you start or numerology or they speak to you in so many different ways. And we, Every single person has it. Um, and, you know, I I, I want to give you this hour, but I do want to mention that, you know, and a, you probably know this from your guides is that we're like a fingerprint. You know, our soul is so unique and beautiful mm -hmm. and it has um, its own sound. It has its own original name. That's not. Uh, and, and so I, I sometimes I'm being told to say that because people forget how special they are and. That everything's super unique. So um, somebody needed to hear that today. So that's why. I'm yeah. Actually... And, and don't this hour is our hour together. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm not, I never come to these interviews like it should be all about me <laughs> a conversation because we both have something to bring to the table. So my next question is, um, you might, you know, when you start to elevate and get to different um, vibrations, do new guides come in and do they introduce themselves or, you know, what's yeah. that experience? So, so I want to go back to, I'm going to answer that in a second, but you okay. said the soul's imprint, which I feel like is super important. So I love that you touched on that because my guides taught me, I've been communicating with my guides for about 17, 18 years now. And they taught me later on, I didn't even realize this. They said, we are direct reflections of your soul. Mm -hmm. So it was so powerful for me to understand, like they are really holding up a mirror to our soul and helping us to get to, to the truest alignment. And it's infinite. There's never like, you don't stop. It's constantly growing. So my answer to that is um, my very first guy that came in, he, I don't work with him any longer. He was with me for about a year and he was teaching me how to raise my vibration so that they could lower their vibration and talk to me. So he taught me, besides the fact that I was with, working with a therapist who knew how to work with mediums, he taught me how to communicate with them. And then um, I started calling them in and there were certain books that I did get some help with as well as the therapist, but I would call them in. I would ask them if they're from the highest light and highest alignment with me. I have found that they answer honestly. Mm -hmm. And if they said no, I said they had to go. And if they said yes, they would pick a specific place to stand and we would start being in communication. So there's a lot to cover in this, but the best way that I could explain it, and this is what I teach, it's really important for me to you, for people to know who their guide is and where their guide stands, because when you communicate with them, when you know where they're standing, you're using your inner awareness to communicate. And it almost creates an umbilical cord to that guide. Mm. So guides will, um, I have a number of them. I, I don't share their names. To me, it's a very intimate relationship. 
but guides will come in and out, but they don't just leave. They prepare you before they leave when somebody else is coming in. And then you can have teachers, which is a whole different thing. So there's different types of guides and different, there could be a marketing guide, a health guide, a love guide, you know, there's all different types of guides. Oh, wonderful. Um, I, I went to Ireland and I, my, one of my guys came through and it, they were only, she was only going to be there through my trip in Ireland. And it was, um, yeah. Bridget. <laughs> oh, I love that. And she told me she's riding shotgun with me through my travels, And I just thought that was pretty interesting. And I had a lot of interesting things while I was there happen because I was there for a family reunion. So it was a lot of family, uh, energy that was clearing up for me. Um, but that was really fun because I was like, who say Bridget is with me? Okay. She's like, I'm riding shotgun with you. I was like, okay, I, well, I know I'm going to be safe on this journey. <laughs> but you see what's so important about that. And I love that about Gina. Let me ask you this because shotgun is important because I teach a driving technique thing with your guides. So I want to ask you this. When you went, when you came upon something with your family, a family dynamic, when you brought your attention to, did you turn to Bridget and say, Hey, can you help me through this? Oh, Yes. And did you know, like, she was like to the side of you, like riding shotgun? Was right to my right. Exactly. Um, when she came to me, I was in my car mm -hmm. driving and I was doing a long journey. So um, she sat in the seat and said, I'm riding shotgun with you until you come back from Ireland. And I was like, okay. So I always saw her in that like passenger side. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. And that helps you. I, th I think that helps people that struggle with communication. I know you don't struggle with it, but for anybody who's listening, if they struggle with it, it helps you to just, if you know where they are, you know where to turn your direction. Even if you don't hear their answers, the intention alone is enough. Like just focusing on them, asking a question and then paying attention to the signs and the symbols that the universe brings to you usually carries the answer. If it's a day, two days, three days, it, it happens. Well, she also that. wanted me to do some, what she calls soul presencing, which mm. was talk to my own soul, but I, that I would also see that outside of myself, that it wasn't in something inside. So I would say my name three times and then I would see where I came up. And so I would, uh, and then I would ask myself to hold myself. And that was a way that I, I was, that. I was healing my inner child and things that I was working through because I had some I, I had a lot of things happen this year and it brought up some old triggers. Yeah. So I, my soul kind of ran away for a while and I needed to reel it back in. And so that, sh that was a way to reel it back in was the soul presencing and to make it feel closer to me. And that really helped me because I think when you have trauma, yeah. Um, and maybe we could talk about that when you have trauma, like, um, it, it, for me, it felt like my soul was like a mile away, way up in the stars. I was like, come back. I can't do this without you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like we get fragmented. Yeah. We really get fragmented. So that makes total sense to me what you went through. And that's beautiful. What a beautiful process that you're, that they, she gave you, your guides gave you in order to heal that journey. And that's the beauty of this work is that when you're in communication with your guides, they're going to give you something so profound and so personal to you that you're going to accelerate your healing so much faster than any other. And it doesn't mean not working with someone because you could pick someone through your guides to work with someone and the healing is just so much quicker, which is great. And can you call in a specific guide, say if you were um, raised in a certain foundation, say, and you always felt like you had a personal connection with like Jesus or something. Could yeah. you, can you call in a specific guide that you're close with? Definitely. 1000%. And um, what it feels to me, like people would be like, I, I don't know, you know, can I, is he so busy? Why does he want? And I'm like, if your heart is calling to Jesus, then that's your guide. Call Jesus in. Mm -hmm. I remember people coming to me, a couple of people came to me and they told me that a reader told them that Archangel Michael was too busy for them. And I was like, what? I was like, that is such a limited consciousness. They don't even have that limitation on them. And so do not believe that like their conscious, when you start working with your guides and you know this, Gina, your consciousness just is just continues to evolve and evolve and evolve. And when you take the box, take yourself out of the box, you take the barriers off. What you can learn is amazing to me. It's so incredible. Wow. Yeah. And I love that. And let, so let's talk about angels then for a second. Sure. Uh, how did they present themselves and um, how do you present them to people? Be, you know, everybody has a different way to kind of explain angels. So angels is not, this is how I, I'm going to describe it. You know how some people just focus on angels 
that's not my thing. Yeah. So mine is uh, angels, ascended masters, could be planets, could be an animal, could be nature. It could be a color. It could be music. Your guides can come in at any type of form. They don't have to be in human form. They've never had to like live on the earth plane. I had a guide above my head that was just color and light. And she, and she felt feminine because that's how we understand things. They work with our understanding. So they don't have our words. They have vibration. And we we interpret it through our own life experiences and words. That's why I teach the symbolic language of your soul. So angels to me are, they're incredible and amazing. And I definitely have one uh, master angel that works with me now, but that wasn't my initial thing, even though I'm raised Catholic and I still pray to saints and I talk to saints. So I feel angels hold different uh, types of expertise and I feel like if there's a specific expertise you want to expand and grow in, work with that angel and let that angel help you. Like Archangel Michael is so important to have around when you're opening up to your guides so that you feel super safe. Mm -hmm. And I definitely call an Archangel Michael. I definitely call an Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Raphael. When I'm clearing spaces, those are the three I work with. Um, I've been working with, since I started Liberated Healer, um, Metatron, because he's- Oh, yes. Yeah brought the title of the podcast and everything to me. Mm. I, I never use that word. I never even use the word healer in a lot of things, but um, he helped, he downloaded, he gave me the download, the name, the, the logo, everything, you know, and that's why, um, you know, when you get connected to this and that's why I love this topic so much, um, you can kind of look outside yourself a little bit for the, this guidance because I don't know, um, especially when you, are an empath or, you know, you, you, you can't put this on to other people all the time. You know, they'd just be like, Gina, I have to work or whatever. Like, you know, you need to have outside stimuli, I guess is what I'm saying when you're yeah. an empath. Right. You know what I love? I, I agree with you a thousand percent and something, I, I feel like I got this in your emails. Our email um, exchange was so just welcoming and friendly and it wasn't woo woo and it wasn't like unicorn riding only, and I can't, I don't do well with that. I'm super practical and grounded. And I feel like you are too. So we're learning how to bridge the practical with the spiritual because so many highly spiritual sensitive empaths just hide. They don't know how to exist in the, in the physical world, but they're here to bring this incredible message, this incredible work out into the world. And I feel like people like you and me and others are teaching people how to be comfortable in their sensitivity in their space and do that. So I love the fact that yeah. Archangel Metatron, I used him a bit this past month, like I think it was in December. And what a phenomenal healer for you to be working with. And I love the fact that you can show that an, an angel of that magnitude can bring in the liberated healer. What a great title. Like they can help us with that stuff. We don't have to struggle. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't have done that. And I didn't even want to be a teacher at that point. And he, uh, I thought, well, I thought I was just healing myself this whole time. And he's like, no, you got to yeah. share. And I was like, but it's become the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. And I was looking for my soul path and my purpose. And I was always asking for it. Mm. Um, you just, you have no idea what it's going to be. And then it just comes plop in. And once you get that and I know a lot of people um, struggle with, I don't know where I belong. Um, that's why I just say, just do the little baby steps and yeah. you'll get there, but just keep asking, you know, and um, have one foot in that direction, whether it's, even if you have a full-time job, right. And you have one thing you're drawn to, it could be anything, right. That's creative or energetic. And you just keep put one foot towards that because that whole door might just swing open. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh, this is what I love doing. Um, and I just love to share. It's like being in love and you want the whole world to be in love. Mm -hmm. so you find your, and you have a background in entertainment. I spent 25 years in entertainment too. And I, it's like, I fell, I fell, I fell in love with myself and my life path. And I kind of want everybody to fall in love with themselves and their life path, you know? And it's the reason why you and I, I think do this kind of stuff. Yeah, there's so much truth in that because when I entered into this, I one had to learn how to work with my gifts because they were driving me crazy. Um, and two, I, I just was interested in it. I was like, did, like started with tarot and then different things. And I'm like, wow, this is really fascinating. This is interesting. And then my gifts just started opening up more and more and more. And I'm a gatherer of people. So I started gathering people to practice with and to study and all of that. And then we started doing free readings. And then those were off the charts. And 
it was just incredible. And like you, I had no idea that this was what I was going to be doing. I had to have a real conversation with God before I agreed to do it. And once I agreed to it, the floodgates opened, like opportunity just kept falling into my lap. And so I want everybody, it's true, the baby steps, like I didn't set out to do this. All I did was set out to study something I enjoyed studying. And then more and more revealed itself. And then before I knew it, I was in my soul's work. I was still acting when I was doing readings. You know, I didn't, I had no idea. Yeah. And that you were probably as an actress channeling some, because I know a lot of actors are cha have our channels. Yeah, I would say definitely. And then we're empaths too. So we're picking it. We can tap into the emotions of the character really mm -hmm. fast. And the one thing I learned, I was getting ready to go on set to do a short film. And I was working on this Alminio murder, um, which is one of the stories in the book. And I didn't want to leave to go on set. And that's when I knew I was done with acting. I, I was just done. I found what I truly love to do. And I'll, I want to share this with anybody who's growing a spiritual entrepreneurial, a spiritual business. If you're a spiritual entre entrepreneur, you go through iterations of it. You go through evolutions. So follow people that tell you the truth. And I know that you're following Gina and she's a truthful person because people out there will tell you, oh, I found it and I'm blissed out and everything's great. And that's not true. I just closed a program that I had for 10 years, you know, just at the end of last year, December, 2022. And you go through different stages in your business. You fall in love with something, you're doing, you're great. And then you realize, oh my goodness, I've grown past this. There's something else. And that's the beauty of this work. And also I, I had a video on a lot of these other teachers won't tell you that you should ever leave. And I, oh. they're not going to do that. You have to know when it's time to leave. You have yeah. to and not leave, but like, going, hmm, I think I uh, learned all I can from this teacher or this program. And I want to go towards that because they're not going to tell you to leave. There's a lot of people will stay in the same program for eight, nine years or whatever. And they're like, no, you need to stay here. Otherwise you're going to get all these like, entities on you are weird things, wow. you know, and I'm not like that. I said, don't, if a teacher tells you that, that's probably your sign that you should probably go find something else because that's who we are, you know, and that's what this whole thing is, is to like, let us uh, be, you know, energy and move and the restrictions, they are just that like spiritual, because spirit, there are spiritual restrictions that people try to put on people. And that's to me, not what we're doing here. I agree. That's scarcity and lack mentality. So in my membership program, we had teachers from all around, like pretty much the world, but all around who we brought in to teach programs. And then we brought attention to their work because I am an expert in some areas, but I'm not an expert in everything. Like, I don't even like astrology, but we brought astrologers in because people love astrology and it's not my area. Like, I don't even want to talk about it. So I was, I was learning from the woman, you know, I interviewed the woman and of course was so gracious and respectful to her body of work, but yeah, you don't want to do that at all. I really feel like the best teachers are the ones who I used to say to my students early on, I want to see you pass what I'm teaching you. I want to see you grow past it and accelerate and really get into your greatness. Oh, I love that. Um, you said something about, you know, working with planets, which made me giggle because my guide said, you're going to be working with um, Jupiter this month. And I was like, you the planet? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I have it on my screensaver now. And they're like, yep, you were. And, and that's the first I've ever heard of that. And I, this was literally just a few days ago. And then when you said, uh, I saw it in your book, I was like, I have to ask you about that. I mean, how do you work with a planet? <laughs> so I love that you asked that. I have a program called Next Level Living and we're teaching this past this month in January, I taught them how to get in touch with the originating energy they came from. Mm -hmm. Now you could say there's more energy behind it, but it's the energy that they're originating from on this particular lifetime. And that's usually star energy or light energy or universal energy. So I bring them out into whatever galaxy they're from and whatever energy they're from and they connect with it. The reason it came around for me was, again, astrology didn't speak to me. And it was because like, I really got clear early on and I have nothing against astrology because I know it really helps people. Yes. But for me personally, I was like, well, the horoscope said I'm going to have a bad day and I would start adopting the bad day before I even gave it the opportunity of the day to reveal itself. Now I know astrology has really evolved from there and I know there's incredible people out there. 
with that said, Spirit said to me early on, I actually went to a reader and she said, oh, you were like an old time astrologer. She didn't know anything about me. She's like, you do not like this new time astrology. You were like, oh, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. You know, when you hear something, it's like, that's truth. And Spirit said to me, you can't work with this type of astrology because you just need to work with the organic energy of the planets. Mm. You need to just be in relationship with them. And so that is what I feel like is really important for me personally. So if the, like, I love the moon, the moon speaks to me and it's like, if I'm working with the moon, I just want to work with the energy of the moon. I want the energy to communicate what it wants me to know. And what the moon is going to communicate to me is going to be different than what it communicates to you, Gina, because we're on different life paths. We have different experiences. We're different people. We're also here for different expertise. And for me, I love anything that's out of the box. <laughs> and this allows me to be out of the box. I can't wait to see what you discover with Jupiter. It's going to be so your organic way of communicating. And there's no formula. And no. that's when you learn, the, like, you know this. That's when you grow at accelerated speeds. Yeah, I just know that it's expansive. And I feel, and, you know, my business is expanding. Um, you know, everything is just going tenfold on that. And uh, so I guess that's why <laughs> Jupiter is working with me right now. And um, I actually saw a picture of Jupiter with um, uh, that they found from NASA where on the very top of it, because it has something like 1200 Earths inside of it. Wow. So, um, but at the very top of Jupiter, they found a picture that NASA has that was just all this light going in a circle. And it it was like some type of like uh like like light force that was on the planet. They they got a picture of it. So look that up online. It's really fascinating. That's so cool. And then tapping into that, like you can go into a whole meditation inside that light, and so much information will come out of it, which is just okay. so cool. That's so cool because the light um that was on top of Jupiter was the size of Earth. Yeah be really fascinating for you to go into a journey. I don't want to put paw prints on your experience. Oh yeah. But that's kind of, cause I'm known for my meditations. Like my guides take us places. So you could go into that light and just explore and see what wants to be revealed. Anybody can do that. Like I just did with Claire Cognizance when I was teaching Claire Cognizance, I had them go into like, I think a petal of a rose and just have the experience of the knowledge of that, the infinite wisdom and knowledge. And what I love about that type of work is, like I said, there's no right, right or wrongs. You can't get it right. You can't get it wrong. It just is. So you allow it to be your experience. And that just just grows people in ways that it just blows my mind. It, it's grown me. If you, if, if you can start to see the essence of these living things, you know, you your body immediately gets grounded. Yeah. And the things that are, are programming or what we've brought into this world at this time start to not be able to hold on to us so tightly. Right. Yeah. The, the need to overspend, the need to have too many things and um, also the need to not let go of relationships that need to let go. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you stare at a flower and you see the essence of that flower, you know, and then you can kind of go into it, it that's how, to me, how it helps us just calm down mm -hmm. and, and release itself. So, um, love that. So when you, when you are inviting, you have to invite your guides, right? Can you talk about that? Cause that's, I think a really big topic of your book and it's right in the front is about yeah. how you need to invite them. Yeah. So, um, people are always waiting for their guides to show up and they're like, I don't see my guides. I don't, I haven't met my guide. I don't know where my guide is. And I'm like, your guide's right there. You need to invite them in. You yeah. need to just assume that they're there because they are. Everybody has guides. And invite them in to talk to you. Invite them in into conversation, whether you know who they are or not. The one thing that, I, like I said, I teach people is make sure it feels from the highest light and highest alignment. So if people are afraid to enter into that field, then I say work with Archangel Michael, work with Jesus. Make that your guide while you're learning who your real guide is. But the invitation is all you need in order to get into communication with your guides. They're waiting to be invited. Yeah. You know, you can say, like, I'm ready for you. I, I, my intention is to speak to you. That's enough. You having the intention and the invitation is enough and it'll happen. Wow. So, um, wow. So the higher aspect of ourselves, um, like we were saying earlier, once you kind of you kind of just keep 
rising vibrationally and different guys, right? We talked about that earlier. Yeah. So for me, it's, it takes a lot in the beginning to raise your vibration, to meet where they are and they lower their vibration. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you want to get into, um, you can do it walking and stuff like that too. I don't teach people that they have to just be quiet and they just have to clear their chakras and open their chakras, but that's how I did it in the beginning. Right. I, I, my guide came through right away. So I was working, I didn't know that's what it was. I was working with a therapist and I felt something physically leaning on me. And I had done enough work where I trusted the imagination because I did a lot of dream therapy work, a lot of dream work with, um, it wasn't even in therapy, but I did a lot of dream analysis, which is all symbols and a lot of clairvoyancy. And I went to my therapist and I said, something's leaning on me. And she said, close your eyes and tell me what it is. And because in my dream work, we weren't allowed to question anything. We had to just go in and reveal. I just closed my eyes and all of a sudden I went into a channel session. And there was this little guy by me. He was a gnome and he didn't like being called a gnome, but we would laugh about it. And he was the one who taught me, but he was always on my left side. So I always knew where he was and he got me ready. So you're, you want to, you don't want to do it when you're drinking. You don't want to do it. Um, I would say for me personally, I could do, wouldn't do it with any substance in me. I had to do it from um, a clear space. I would get really nauseous. I would get really dizzy in the beginning because the vibration was so palpable, strong. It would take over my physical body that sometimes I had to stop the meditation and lay on the floor and breathe or go get crackers in order to calm my body down. But after you do it enough times and the way that you do it is I just taught this actually in my next level living you can see yourself rising out of your body, out of the house, above the roof, going past the universe, you know, the moons, the stars going out into the galaxy. That's a quick way to learn how to raise your vibration. And when you're doing that and envisioning that, or just even feeling it, if you struggle with vision, then they're, you're calling them in. Like I'm calling in my guys from the highest light and highest line with me. Um, I can't remember everything I say, but it's, I'm asking you to make it quick, clear, and something else I say, you can say whatever you want. You don't need my words. And then you'll, you'll start sweating profusely. That's usually what happens. And they start lowering their vibration. And there is a whole meditation that I have where you sit on a, a bench and you invite them in and you could do that too. You could see yourself sitting on a cloud and inviting them in and then just see a crowd of people walking towards you. And then one will stop in front of you usually and just be like, are you my guide from the highest light and highest alignment with me? Mm -hmm. And if they say yes, they can say, if they say no, they have to go. If you don't trust this process, then I'm going to say, just work with Archangel Michael with you with while you're doing this and ask Archangel Michael, is this something I can trust right now or Jesus? And like you said that they, they have to be truthful. So yes. That's, that's a good safety net as well. Yeah. So my thing was now I raised, raised Catholic G, uh, Gina, I'm not sure if, uh, what you were raised and I'm also Italian. So we grew up with a lot of superstitions in our life. Right. So when I had this experience since I was little, it was terrifying. So by the time I started working with them, I created a safety net. I had to, because I slept from very early on with prayer cards under my bed with rosary beads because I was always being disturbed. So I still had some of that um, ritual inside of me. Mm -hmm. And I just made the commitment that I believe in free will. Nothing's allowed in that I don't allow in. It doesn't mean that things at that time didn't try to get in. But if you listen to my podcast, I think it's episode two where I was, I'm dropping eggs. <laughs> There's something like dropping uh, eggs everywhere in, in LA listen to that thing and you'll hear what I had to do in order to bring myself into a safe space. Cause at first it was really scary. I didn't like it. And um, also in your big book, you talk about how um, uh, a mountain appeared to you yeah. as a guide. Yeah. So I was... how, how, I mean, I think that would be really interesting for people to understand that that kind of an element can come to you. Yeah. So I was in meditation and all of a sudden this huge mountain, black mountain showed up and he, and he felt masculine, right? They don't, they don't know feminine and masculine, but they, we know masculine and feminine. I mean, that's going to shift too, because uh, gender is shifting. And he came in as a male, huge thing. And he called himself black rock <laughs> and he was super powerful. And he was at that time in my life, 
I was really trying to, to decide to move out of LA. I was making a lot of decisions about my business, about my personal life. And I needed that magnitude, that energy to support me in where I was going. And at that time, I was hiking a lot in a particular hike in LA that was very profound for me. We will find certain hikes that will really open us up in nature. And I would just commune, then I would just take them on the hike with me and just communicate with that energy. That energy felt so safe, so powerful. So uh, was really showing me that I could do anything I wanted to do, anything I put my mind to. So elements can show up like that for sure. Wow. For sure. I had a, a similar experience because I, I lived in Montana for just literally nine months. And um, well, that's a number, right? Yeah. And the mountains, <laughs> the mountains came in and the trees. And they were a part of my journey and mm -hmm. they wanted to reveal all truth mm -hmm. that could not have been seen before. And I felt that the energy in LA, even though I, I, I love it, I was born there and I'll probably reside there forever now, but it is a little bit more airy and right. So truth can get hidden in there a little bit yeah. more. It's easier to, but when you're around mountains and like, that is like that earth energy, there, you, there's no no shenanigans. <laughs> mm. You can't, you can't live a false life. You can't live a false relationship. You can't live anything false. So if you really want to know, I was telling people, you really want to know about your relationship or kind of your path, go to the mountains for a while and it mm. will reveal itself because there's just something about you. There's, there can't be that. I think that's why some people are really drawn to that, especially after the pandemic, they wanted to retreat to, to nature in the mountains because they were looking for truth in themselves because it was starting to get revealed, you know, being isolated and things like that. So it was really a great information of healing for us during that whole awareness process, even though it was painful and, and, you know, in many ways. Um, yeah. You know, what's interesting with that is like you, so you went to, they sent you into the mountains and trees for nine months so that you could have that experience and now you don't need to leave LA in order to understand what that experience is because it's with you all the time. And then for, for people like, again, I'm not, um, I don't want to project onto your experience at all, but using it as a teaching tool, even if you're in a city, cause I was like in Manhattan and different places, even if you were in, you're in a city, you can invite that energy in to meditation. You could look at a picture that is open and just go into that picture and then find yourself in the trees. And what's funny about it's not funny about COVID, but what was interesting is I moved out of LA. I basically live where there's hiking trails, walking distance everywhere. And they prepared, they knew that like, so during COVID for me, because I already worked from home, I was able to just hike like two times a day. And really it was a, a biblical experience for me in some aspects. I'm sure it was for a lot of people because a lot of people were pushed to the limit of growth and that's what happens. Yeah. We were all pushed to the limit of growth for sure. Um, well, I, I want to just make sure we give enough time to kind of, is there any messaging or way that you want to take us out in the next 10 minutes, um, either through a meditation or messaging or something about your, your classes or school or what? Yeah. I feel like what I want to teach people real quickly is the symbolic language of your soul. And I want to introduce, I'm probably, you may know that concept or not know it. It's, I haven't seen, I coined it for me. I haven't seen it anywhere. I'm sure, you know, it was what my guides gave me. So whatever, I'm going to call it the symbolic language of your soul. Cause that's how it's branded through me. And I'd like to teach you a little bit, something about it so that when you're walking in nature or doing the dishes or just doing everyday tasks, you are communicating with your guides through the symbolic language of your soul. And then I can tell you where you can learn more about me, but I'd rather leave them with something that they can use, use in their life right now. So the symbolic language of your soul is our guides speak to us through repetitive symbols. So many people experience numbers over and over again, or butterflies or ladybugs, or they um, may hear about a certain book like a few times, right? They're communicating to us through these symbols and these symbols hold a meaning to us. So I do this in classes all the time. I'll be like, okay, everybody tell me what a butterfly is. And I'll have hundreds of people on a webinar say, and the majority of people will have a different response to what a butterfly means to them. And that's based on a life experience they had with butterfly. 
So if spirit is continually showing you butterflies, it's not what you Google, although Google's not bad. I'll tell you how to use that in a second. It's what does it mean to you? What were you thinking about in the moment when the butterfly showed up? What question have you had on your mind that you've been looking for an answer? What does butterfly feel like to you? What about the butterfly? What was the butterfly doing at the moment that it made you um, notice something? Like, was it dancing around? And I'll tell a quick story in a second, but was it dancing around you? What was it doing? What colors were it? What did those colors make you feel? Don't worry about, oh, this is the color of this or that, or I have to go look it up. I don't have enough knowledge. No, Spirit's saying, through your life experience, we are teaching you. We want to communicate with you. And that's why we're using these symbols. That's why numbers, the numbers that used to come up for me a lot of times were three, five, four. And that was the house I grew up in. And I hated that address because it was so traumatic in that household. But yet also that's when they were, they started communicating to me when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very powerful number for me. So when I see it now, I know it, things are shifting and changing. And I know what numbers mean to me too. So use this symbolic language. Don't run to Google right away. Ask yourself, what was I thinking about or what question am I answering right now in the moment? What does this particular symbol or this number mean to me? What does it make me feel? Go to feeling. Everybody's like, goes to their mind. And it's like, what do you feel? If that number, that symbol was singing a song to you right now, what song would it sing to you right now? If it had a voice, what, what quote would it give you? What would it tell you about yourself? And before you know it, you're in communication. If you go to Google, there's going to be a ton of things that come up. And I get this all the time. And it'll be like, it told me I was going to die. I'm like, no, pick the one that resonates with you. <laughs> Don't pay, and if it tells you, you know, the one that resonates with you is the one that's strong. I'm going to just share a really quick story just to bring this home. So um, I had, an, this was way before I was in touch with my guides, but I was already knew I was psychic. I knew I was opening up. I didn't know exactly to what degree. And I had an experience with my little dog that I love so much. And she bit someone at a beach and it was like, and I knew there was going to be trouble. I just knew it. And um, I was too afraid to check my messages because I was so scared. I was going to lose this little dog. This dog was my life. And so I went out for a walk and I was just like, I was beside myself and I came upon this step, this like um, wood, this cement fence. And there was a butterfly just sitting on it. And I walked over to it and I started petting it. Oh and then the butterfly started flying around my body. And I started bobbing and weaving with the butterfly. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm dancing with this butterfly. And then the butterfly landed again and I started petting it again. And then it started doing it again, uh, dancing around me. And we were dancing together and it was just flying around me. And I was like bobbing and weaving with it. And then it, it went away. And I knew in that instant, everything was going to be okay. And I checked my messages and the person did leave a message, but solution dropped in on how to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. And I got someone to help me and I handled the situation in, cause I wanted to be, be responsible, but I also knew intuitively this person was going to try to take me for, for a ride, which was proven, mm -hmm. but I protected myself and got an intermediary and actually called my mother first. I was afraid to tell anyone and my mother, and then I handled it all and it all got handled beautifully and perfect. So nobody can take that experience away. So when butterfly shows up for me, there's an, I have another story, but I'm not going to get into it. It's super powerful. Get into the symbolic language of your soul. That's my last thing. I absolutely agree. Uh, when I was in Ireland, I worked a lot with fairies uh -huh. and, um, I had never done that before. And there was, a, we were in Donegal and there was a whole bank dedicated to fairies. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a, right along the ocean and all the trees just looked like they were formed in like some kind of sculpture. You could see that they had energies and bodies and they had tiny little doors all around. And I took a bunch of pictures and a lot of them came out black. Oh, like, wow. And then I go, oh, I didn't ask properly. So I deleted them all. And then I went home and then I got candy and flowers and nuts and I tea and I made a whole bag. And, you know, I'm around my family that I've never met before. And they're just like, oh, there she goes. Yeah. <laughs> Feeding the fairies. Right. So um, I put all little 
on the doors, like little gra- I, little pouches of stuff, right? And I was stuck in a rental in my property in, in Montana and they wouldn't let me out of my lease. And I was going to be there for another four months and I desperately wanted to go. I was in this real, uh, I broke up with my fiance. I was in this place all by myself. It was wow. snowing. It was not my energy. It was just making me so sad. And I, and the, the, the landlords had no compassion. They wouldn't even work with me, not at all, you know, and I was trying everything to get a new person to take over the lease. It was just really kind of, and it was just very heavy and I just wanted to go home. And so they had a little box, um, like a ferry box, a post office box with a little door at the bottom. So I wrote a little note and I said, please help me get out of my lease. And I wrapped it up and I put little presents by the door, right? And I get home. I'm literally home like within a day and I smell something in the basement and there's all this mold that had grown within like a couple days and I had to leave the house. Oh my goodness. Don't you love it? it Funny. Not funny, but uh, the fairies and mold, right? That's what they are. Yeah. You live around it's moisture. Totally. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't do anything, you yeah. know, it wasn't like I created that. No, the owners had no compassion for me. Yeah. Right. So it was the way that had to be handled. Universal law just yeah. kind of helped me. And that was a guide for me at that yeah. time. So that's amazing. Know, it happens. And I, everybody was like, they, they were shocked because they knew I wanted to leave. Yeah. But I couldn't have created mold. You know, and it grew within, it grew two feet within a week. Wow. Like it was growing crazy. Well, you know, what's interesting. It goes back to what you asked me and I know we have to wrap this up, but it's you invited and you had intention. And that goes to show right away, like everything you did and they helped. Yeah, they definitely did. Thank you, Fairy. Yeah. Thank you, Alma. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Thank Sacred you. Stories. Uh, Thank you for all the listeners and support and everything is going to be linked everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so people can find you and your programs. And if they're interested in learning more about guides and kind of taking a deep dive on what you do and see if that resonates for them. You know, I, I do recommend uh, whatever classes, you know, if that's something you want to get into to work with Marilyn. Yeah, and- definitely go check out my website, MarilynAloria.com, and you will be able to find whatever you need there. And that'll be great. And then reach out to us and let us know if you need something. Well, this has been a wonderful hour. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guides. Woo Thank woo. You. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Gina. Bye, sweetheart. Bye.